by Mr. Brennan, so E4, and the guy played the Sicilian. We've talked about this a little bit, but I ask you to do, when you play against openings you don't have special knowledge of, just go back to basics and control this center and get your pieces out and pass it. So you wrote down F3, but you're too good of a player. You forgot to write down the end. You went from the worst move on the board to the best move on the board, okay? You gotta tell me though what your moves are. You forgot the knight, right? Okay, good move. E6. Most kids play D6, and the system that I teach after D6 is to get a quick check, okay? Most kids block with their bishop because they don't like to put themselves in a pin, okay? Now when they block with their bishop, I want you to make a trade. Don't worry which way they take that. And I want you to castle. Here's the reason I want you to castle. When he plays knight f6 to attack your pawn, I want you to guard with your rook. I know guarding with the knight is common, right? But I want you to guard with your rook because you don't block your c pawn. The next two moves, you're going to play c3 and then d4. And if he ever takes you, you take back and look at this game, right? You went from an opening that you don't know much about to a perfectly reasonable chess game. Control of the center, save king, you're going to develop your piece and have a good chess game, okay? So, most kids play D6, and that's how you're gonna continue, okay? Let's go back to your actual game. Put everybody back where they belong. Okay, so, against the move E6, the trick is, where do you put this bishop? If you put it on D5, I'm actually well-developed to attack your bishop right away. And after take and take, who's got control of the center? Yeah, okay. So, the hard decision in this position is where do you put the bishop? If you put it here, you're not aiming at any knight, are you? I'll just attack you. And then you really don't want to go back here. Find me a trap for black. Mm -hmm. And then what? You've seen this one. Okay. So what I prefer you do is not develop this bishop. The best move, thank you, is probably to go ahead and just play d4. Okay? Wait for him to figure out where his pawns are going to be before you move the bishop. In fact, some grandmasters, they just move the bishop one square. Just so it doesn't come close to my pawns and get attacked, okay? And I'm going to show you maybe a trap that might happen, okay? Let's just say he pushes his pawn, because if he brings the knight out, you could attack the knight right away, okay? So sometimes they push the pawn to guard that square, okay? Let's say you castle, and he attacks your pawn, okay? I'm going to show you a really cool move, are you ready? You're not going to guard your pawn. You're going to play C3. Now remember I said you might play D4 later? And this pawn guards that one, right? But if he takes the pawn, nothing's guarding the knight, right? Tactics happen on undefended pieces. Not bad, but I'll run away, right? Haven't you been trained to look at checks and captures first? You're looking at threats. If there's a hierarchy of forcing moves, Brendan, look at me for a sec. Checks are at the top, then captures, then threats, okay? You haven't looked at your checks yet. Yeah, and it's weird. This is the hardest tactic to see in chess. Your queen is traveling to your left, but she's attacking to your right. Isn't that strange? You play soccer? You play basketball? Okay, you don't dribble the ball one way and then no look past the other way very often, right? That's what the queen's doing. She's looking left, but actually attacking to the right. Makes sense? Queens are hard to see, okay? Let's go back to your actual game. So I'm okay with this move. I'm also okay with this move, okay? Probably this is okay too, okay? But don't play a move like bishop c4. Oh, you did, but you learned something, right? It's okay, that's part of chess, okay? A6, you know what he's gonna do on the next turn? He's gonna go here. And then when you back up, he'll go here, right? Now, didn't he waste the move on the side of the board with the pawn? When he wastes the move on the side of the board, you have my permission to waste the move on the side of the board. It's not really a waste. Now if I go here, how's the game going to continue? Okay, and now wait. Yeah, you saw it. Very good. I thought you were going to reach for the bishop, but you're too smart for that. Very good, okay? So, you might be thinking in your brain, oh, Mr. Klein doesn't want me putting a pawn on the edge, but if he did it, you can do it. Make sense? Okay, you're not wasting any time. You're still ahead 2 to 0 in development, right? Okay. So, let's go back. A6. You play D3. That stops his threat, because now if he goes here, your pawn guards it, right? Good job. He played here. Which one is the queen? And so no, you play here. It says so. Queen C7. You're doubting yourself. Knight C3. Knight C6. Bishop G5. Okay. I have a funny plan for you here. If you play Bishop G5, what you might do is back up and then back up. You see how strong your bishop is? 
Now the other way to get your bishop to this diagonal would be to push. Which one would you do? And then when you go here, the pawn guards the bishop, right? This way takes more time, but you don't open up your king, which is where you're going to castle, right? I'd probably rather take an extra move and not open up the king. Because pawns, pawns can't go backward, can they? So, if his bishop gets to this diagonal, Brendan, if you ever lose this pawn, could you see a problem on this diagonal? Yeah. So, I like your idea. You should come around like this. Okay. He went here. Okay, if he wants to make a trade, you could probably just make a trade too. But you backed up. So you kind of wasted a little bit here. Yeah, if your plan is to back up, just go here in the first place. You could just develop too. What's wrong with this one? Yeah, if, oh, yeah, he's developing your pieces, right? He's helping you. Now, how does he guard this pawn? He either moves the king, which is bad, or he pushes, and that weakens all of his dark squares, right? And then if he ever castles in big trouble, okay? Like, let's say he moves the knight, because he can't go here or here, right? By the way, can he castle? What's the opposite of yeah? Why can't he castle? Yeah, it's against the rules, right? If he ever does castle, you might play h4 and h5, because this is pinned, right? Then you might go here. You see how he has no dark squared bishop? Yeah. What would you do on the next turn? You don't need one to win this game. How does he guard checkmate? Then you take and checkmate later on, right? Okay. I realize I gave you three or four moves in a row, but they're strong. Okay. So let's go all the way back to this position. When two pieces aim at each other, he can, but before you, you know, often want him to take you and not you take him. This is called yeah, tension, okay? We have a video on chesskid.com called Keeping the Tension from a woman's, grand, a woman's master named Strongheart, okay? If you would watch that video, you would know about this idea, okay? But you can't watch all of our videos all at once, right? There's too many. When you take, you help her develop, or him, or whoever you play. When you move here, if he takes, he helps you develop. Do you see the difference? Okay. So you took. Oh, I thought you went back. Uh, and this happened. Okay. Queen C1. Why'd you go to C1? You want to make a battery, right? But why not D2 so that when you castle, your rooks are connected? Makes more sense, right? Okay. So Queen C1, he castled. I like how you're consistent with your plan. Now, you did a grandmaster idea without even knowing it. You made him move his pawn, and although you temporarily have to move your bishop again, you just gained an outpost right in the center of the board. Okay, so, what's that? Okay, stop for a second. Let's define outpost. Outpost is an open square that he can never attack with a pawn. Find me a square that he can never attack with a pawn again. It's right in the middle of the board. Right. Brendan, when a pawn moves, it weakens the squares beside it, right? You're going to start dropping pieces into that square. Let me tell you what a grandmaster would do now. He would go here. Then he would swap his bishop for the knight. Then his knight would land there, and the knight would laugh at black for the rest of the chess. Look how strong that knight is. It's really Exactly. I better go here. Because if I move my queen, I guess I could go here. But if I move my queen somewhere else, like here, you could open up my king, right? And here's what I would do. Even though you're getting rid of your strong knight, you're rip ripping open my king, right? Then I'd go here, and then I'd go here, here. By the way, another outpost, right? Another outpost. And then you're going to check me. Okay? Very, very strong squares for you. Okay? Also, if my queen went back, you could fork me or something, right? It's just a really annoying piece to deal with. Okay? So even though bishop to f4 loses the tempo, you're happy about it because you get a really strong outpost, okay? I'm curious where you went. Oh, Brendan. No, 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 my friend. There's two attackers on this pawn, right? And there's two defenders. Okay? Ty goes to the defender. You know baseball? Ty goes to the runner, right? Okay. That's what's happening in chess, okay? If it's two against two, you can't capture most of the time, okay? You just miscount it. Either that or you forgot the rule. Okay, so takes, takes. Now, at least you have a pin. You got a little something going for you. You castle. And he unpinned himself. It's a pretty smart move. And you dropped in here. Okay, but here's the deal. You're behind material, aren't you? Okay. When you go here, can he trade off your knight? And if you take, can he trade your bishop too? You're getting the word. I mean, trades are bad when you're behind. Okay. Plus, I have a trick. I can play check 
And although you take mine and I take your bishop, it's guarded by my queen. And I'm forking your queen on this pawn. You probably didn't see that trick, did you? Okay, so you may just need to like move your king or something in this position, okay? Just to get that, that that move won't be a check or something, okay? Alright, so knight to d5. He took, you took. I would just take if I was black. I would take, I'd play check, and after he takes, I'd go here. And black is ahead of piece with a fort. Your king is going to be wide open in black's mind. Okay? That's what I would have done. Let's go back to the game. So all of these guys are here. Let me see how good my memory is. Whoops. Wrong way. Those guys are retired. Get them out of the way. So he went here. It's a reasonable move. I don't see anything wrong with it. No, the knight was there. His queen would be hanging. Remember there was a knight trade on d5? Okay. The knight to g4. Bishop takes a8. Was the bishop on c8? Oh, okay. So he just hung a rook after all that good chess? All right, let's see. He got a bishop in return. He's forking your queen and h2 after all. And you saved your queen. And now, you know what he'd like to do? He'd like to move this bishop and threaten something. Because when you take the bishop, you'd get put in checkmate, right? But if I move my bishop, first of all, I can't really threaten anything. But if I go here, what's a good way to stop queen h2? That's a reasonable move, but I want you to pick off some material. Right, you could actually take, couldn't you? Okay. So this tactic, this whole idea, you know, what I really want to do, Brendan, is say, hey, what's that? What's that? Okay, checkmate. See what I want to do? I want to pick my bishop off the board. Next. You fell for my trick. You turned around. Next. You get the in problem in. is, hey, you can't just pick a piece up off the board, right? I was trying to find a way to put you in check. Yeah, you can okay? Alright, so bishop h2. King over. Bishop b7. Okay, here's what I would do. I would go here. I want to have my queen get to the h5. You want to play my sword? And then I'm going to go here. And even if you take my knight, well, maybe I'd have to play like this move. And when your queen moves somewhere, bishop check and then mate. Okay, I'm not going to go through all that because it's taking up too much time, but you kind of get the point. I want my queen to enter the attack. Probably some sort of method like this will get the job. Yeah, yeah, okay, so king h1, he played here, you traded. Oh, uh, now his attack is falling apart. Good job. Bishop to e5, rook to b1. You want to guard this pawn? Okay. Here's the thing though, I don't like big pieces like rooks tied down to defense, right? Can you play c3 to stop the attack? Now your rook can move whatever he wants, right? Don't have your big pieces doing things like guarding pawns. C4, d4, free pawn, right? What was that about? Rook to d1, but you didn't write down which rook. But I'm thinking it was this rook because he took this one. Okay. And he took here. Okay, rooks like the seventh rank, we know that. You're in a pit. Rook F1. Bishop A7. Okay, you're threatening this guy twice. Oh my goodness, Brendan. I just found the move of the century. Are you ready? Are you ready? They don't look ready. Rook takes pawn. If he takes your queen, check and mate at the same time. Some would call that the goal of chess. Rook takes pawn. He can't take with the rook because you win his queen. In fact, that's mate, isn't it? He goes back and then you take. Or take, either way, right? Okay. And he's not allowed to take with the king. That's just playing against the rules, right? So if I can't take, and I can't take, and I can't take, how do I stop all of your threats? Well, that doesn't stop anything. That's checkmate. I could play here, right? But then you just take my rook and win my queen, right? You think about that one? Looks pretty indefensible, don't you think? All right. I know it looks weird to give away your queen, right? But this puzzle, we're taking a picture of this. We're going to put this on our tactics trainer website, okay? Because there is one solution. I'm 100% sure of it, okay? So thank you. You just contributed to the content on chesskid.com, okay? Rook takes pawn, right? Rook takes pawn gets the job done. Even though it looks weird to give away a queen, this is why chess teachers beg for you to look at checks and caps every turn. You never know when it's going to be the right time to play. Okay? Right, let's go over the rest of the game. So bishop to a7, rook to f1, rook to f3, okay? Um, bishop c5, well, if you take the bishop c5, it's me. You forgot there was me. You saw one threat, but you didn't see everything. You gotta look at the mate too, okay? So rook f3, f6, oh, mate one! No! Okay, Brandon, you were so focused on checkmating with this rook, he opened up this rook and you forgot. Okay, I think you're gonna win anyway because this is looking pretty crushing. 
G6, okay. And you played, you have H3, okay, you're gonna somehow break through. F7, and then Queen E6, but you hung a rook. Your rook's in danger, can you save your rook here? Oh, you should have made it when you had the chance, that's the lesson. Queen E6, Queen takes. Queen takes, it says A8, A6. Oh no, we're falling apart. Queen B1, King H2, Bishop B8. Does that mean G1? Oh, it means B8, the opposite of G1. Okay. King, rotation ended. Did you lose this game? Oh, G3, the game just keeps going. You know I get paid by the move, right? King H1. Queen E4, everything's leaving the board. I assume he has some sort of checkmate in here somewhere. Queen G1, Queen D4, Queen F1, Queen B2. Okay, he's getting a little bit hungry for pawns. He needs to be worried about the firepower of your queen and your rook because you can start invading his king, right? Maybe you can do something bad to him, I don't know. Okay, G4, Queen B1, he wants all of your pawns. Hungry, hungry hippos, they can't take that one. Queen C2, King F1. Queen D1, it's a never ending game. Queen G4, Rook C3, Queen F4. Oh, wait, you just lost your game. Both players forgot or something. Alright, so Queen F4, Rook F3, I guess he just forgot. Queen H4, Rook G3, you hung it twice. He said, you don't need to ask me twice, I will take it. Queen E2, now you gotta go for some kind of weird stalemate, buddy. You, it's really. It's really too bad, buddy, because you, you kind of outplayed him, but you just missed mate and won. How did you survive 10 more moves? It's impossible. Rook E2, how could there not be a mate? Okay, let's all find a mate together. Ready? I found mate. One, where do you have to go? Uh, two, there's a checkmate. Okay. If you guys can find others, I'm sure they exist. Instead, he played here. So he got so focused on the queen and helper checkmate, he didn't realize there were other possibilities, okay? Now, if only this pawn were gone, and this queen were gone, what would this be? It's kind of like your last hope, right? Okay. Unfortunately, it's hard to give away this pawn, because if you go there, it's checkmate, right? So, But if the pawn were missing, here's the kind of move I want you to play. I want you to play check, and then give away your queen, right? That would be brilliant, but with the pawn on the board, it doesn't work. Alright, so rookie two, let's finish things off. Queen A4. I don't understand that. Yeah, but your queen's hanging. And then he played G5. Maybe this pawn's not there. I don't know. Right, A3, F5. Queen D1. Rook C2. Okay. Everything leaves the board. And then I assume he made a queen and won, won the game, right? Alright. I think the instructional part of the game is probably over there. Don't miss mate and let him have a chance, buddy. You had him. Alright, good game, buddy. Let's go.